so far, Lindsey Graham and John Kasich uh, are are you know are winning the award of uh, you know some small amount of rationality. Everything else is kind of you know breast chest beating uh, 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 whatever. Here's uh, George Pataki. He says, uh, let's cut 15%. Let's lay off 400,000 people. That would be all federal government jobs. Uh, if you were to take all government jobs, it'd be over 3 million people, four, you know, 15%. But uh, if 15% of the federal workforce is 400,000 people. George Pataki says, I want to be president, and, uh, and I'm gonna, the first thing I do is lay off 400,000 people. We're also going to stop spending money on Common Core. I don't think we're spending money on Common Core. Common Core is a val- voluntary thing. It's a set of, you know, just stand. And he wants to cut Obamacare, of course. I mean, you know, everybody, they have to say that, right? Uh, so anyhow, here's George Pataki. What federal government agencies do you think should be eliminated? Well, let me start very briefly by saying we should get rid of Obamacare. Uh, we should get rid of Common Core. And we should reduce the size of the federal workforce by at least 15%. Uh, that's a plan. That's a plan. This guy really thinks it through carefully. Um, Rand Paul talking about how, you know, I, I went to Chicago and now they like me better than Hillary. Um, you know, it's uh, and, and, and there's a little town in, in northern Louisiana where they like me better than Hillary. And there's a there's a little town in western Texas where they like me better than Hillary. Uh, uh, Rand Paul. Well, I'm a different kind of Republican. I think we need a new GOP. I'm a Republican who actually is leading Hillary Clinton in five states won by President Obama. Why? Because I have been going places Republicans haven't been in years. I've been to Detroit, Chicago, Philadelphia, Ferguson with a message that liberty, low taxes will help poverty, will help joblessness. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Low taxes on billionaires will help poverty. It'll help expand poverty, sure. Uh, Rick Perry lectures jeb bush yeah this was the only the only time in the evening as far as far as i could tell that one candidate directly took a kick upside the head of another candidate um here's rick perry the guy that uh, that uh, donald trump who wasn't there because he was offended that the union manchester union leader wrote nasty things about him and they sponsored this event but uh you know since trump wasn't there to kick uh, he decided to go after jeb here's rick perry and we have to cut spending. And I know a little bit about cutting spending. We had a $10 billion budget shortfall in, in my home state in 2003, Jeb. And we went in there and we made those cuts. And we told people that we would do that because we realized that's exactly how you have to live your life. Right. Yeah, governments are just like households. In fact, that meme came up several times last night. And it's a nonsense meme. Households, I'm sorry, you know, no matter how much debt I have or don't have, I can't, I can't print my own money. Governments are, and, and the purpose of my household is not to provide for the public good. And, uh, you know, I, I could go on and on, but, you know, households are not governments and vice versa. It's a stupid, it's, a, it's, it's, an, it's an indication of somebody who not only doesn't understand economics, but also doesn't understand the basic structure of government. Doesn't understand, like, you know, Thomas Jefferson 101. Marco Rubio saying, you know, a lot of people who come into this country are like my sister-in-law, for example, who, who uh, you know, married my brother-in-law and, and after a, a multi-year romance and uh, then became a U.S. citizen. And he doesn't think that that's a good thing, apparently. Uh, the same thing, by the way, Jeb Bush's wife, same situation. Uh, she was a Mexican citizen. Now she's a U.S. citizen. Um, but uh, Marco Rubio doesn't like that. Instead, he just wants us to bring in People who have, quote, merit. What is that? Millionaires? Uh, people who scored, you know, f- f- high on the SATs? I, I, I don't know. Anyhow, here's Marco Rubio. We are the most generous country in the world on immigration. We admit one million people a year legally to the United States, but we do so primarily on the basis of whether or not they have a relative living here. We cannot afford to do it that way anymore. In the 21st century, legal immigration must be based on merit on what you can contribute economically, basically whether you are coming to be an American as opposed to simply live in America. Yeah, so forget about, you know, any idea of falling in love with somebody who's not a U.S. citizen because <laughs> you will never get them to be able to come to this country if Marco Rubio becomes president. Uh, little Ricky Santorum, uh, he said, well, at least I'm not running against Romney this time. This was uh, one of the more inane comments of the evening. Here he is. You've run before. You're glad you made the decision to do it again. Um, it's been a, you know, it was, it was a, a tremendous opportunity last time around. 
Uh, this time around, it's actually better because uh, last time everyone was trying to say we were more conservative than Mitt Romney. This time, you're actually talking about issues and how right. we're going to help this country, and that's a good thing. Thank you, Senator. You're right. We're actually talking about issues. Where are the Democrats talking back, Debbie Wasserman Schultz? Why did we not hear from Bernie and Martin O'Malley and Hillary Clinton and, and uh, uh, Jim Webb and Lincoln Chafee? Why did we not hear from them last night, right after the Republicans were done? You don't have to make it a, a debate. You can do it like the Iowa thing, you know, where they just speak one after the other. Anyway, here's the last one. This is Scott Walker. He, of course... Uh, you know, owes his political career to the Koch brothers, and the Koch brothers are, you know, inherited an oil fortune from daddy. Their, their daddy made a, a pile of money with Joe Stalin, you know, drilling oil in Russia, and, and now they run, you know, the oil business, refining business, tar sands in Canada, uh, the pipelines, refineries, well, I think, I guess I said refineries, gas, coal, they're in all these, and, and, and plus, you know, some pretty dirty industries like making paper and things. Uh, with their Georgia Pacifica company. So here's uh, Scott Walker uh, uh, basically lying about Obama's uh, plan to reduce the amount of carbon emission, carbon pollution that these plants are putting out, and replace that with free sunlight. Here's Scott Walker. Well, first off, it's not the uh, clean power plan. It's the costly power plan. It would be like a buzzsaw to the nation's economy. Uh, the states like mine and many of the other governors here would be devastated by that. You know, I, I'm an Eagle Scout. We were taught a long time ago, uh, your campsite should be cleaner when you leave than when you find it. So I want to balance a sustainable environment with a sustainable economy. You know, George McGovern ran, he didn't talk about it very much, but, you know, he flew 35 bombing missions in World War II. John McCain was a prisoner of war for five years, uh, flew a bunch of bombing missions. Uh, <laughs> it's like we have a long history, uh, Ulysses S. Grant, you know, we have a long history, D Dwight Eisenhower, of, of people with a great military background saying, you know, yeah, I, you know, I've, I was the supreme allied commander of uh, American forces in Europe and took down Hitler. And Scott Walker, I was an Eagle Scout. <laughs> it's really. That qualifies you for president of the United States. I mean, this is not to put down Eagle Scouts. You know, one of my best friends was an Eagle Scout, uh, you know, uh, Bill Thomas. But uh, I, it's like, really? Really? Oh, my. Okay, and last note, and then, then I'm going to pick up your phone calls here. Uh, is Sandra Bland's fan, family has filed a uh, federal lawsuit, and good on them, as the uh, new details are emerging. This over uh, Sean King writing over at Daily Kos. In a nation where less than 1% of police officers who use lethal force, who kill people, are, or, or nearly kill people, are ever successfully prosecuted for misconduct, uh, our nation's civil lawsuit system is basic, that's, you know, basically the only choice you have. If, you're, if you, your relatives are killed by a cop, the odds of that cop ever being held to a counter are 99% against you. It's only, literally only 1%. But you can sue. And the arresting officer violated policies, the jail was violating policies, the video was edited, uh, apparently. Uh, the family, uh, the, the state said, oh, we are doing another autopsy. They, they released uh, marijuana levels that were just, uh, that were patently false, or apparently false, and just designed to, s to smear the victim, right? I mean, this is, this is what they do. So her family's going to sue. Good on them. Good luck. You're listening to Tom Hartman. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. And I thought it was fascinating that the issue of Black Lives Matter and the issue of, of uh, you know, Latino lives and whatnot was not, to the best of my knowledge, not even brought up last night. 